Hi, my name is Andres. I'm with Music Daily, and today I'm interviewing Zylo for a new single, Super Sex Mona Lisa. Hi, Zylo. So how are you today? I'm great. How are you? I am doing fine. I just checked your Instagram like two days ago, and I realized that you are dropping a single in today at the at the date of the recording, like about nine days. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, I'm putting out the first song from my sophomore album. I wanted to just kind of start off a new chapter, a new era. And I'm really excited for everyone to hear it. <laughs> yeah, super sex Mona Lisa. Let's just start there. My boobies and my rosary. My dirty talk is poetry. Let's listen to the Beatles come together right now over me. Okay. Probably the most unhinged title of 2023 thus far. What can you tell me about your inspiration behind the title and the creation of the song? So the song is... Um, kind of about my body and sexualizing myself and how my body can also be a part of my art. Um, and it's kind of like a topic that I've not really explored before in my music. The song's really like fun and quirky and, and sexy and stuff like that. So we were just trying to come up with like a title that could kind of represent like a line in the song that could represent all of that. We were just throwing things out there. And uh, Lee, who wrote and produced the song with me, he was like, what about super sex something? And I just thought it flowed really nice in the song. Um, and yeah, it kind of doesn't yeah. really make sense, but also at the same time, kind of does. <laughs> yeah, no. And I love that you brought up the production because... As an avid listener of your work, I really did sense a shift in your production. And when I was listening to the song, it felt very like blackout Britney Spears clubby, but with like 80s synths and grudge. So can we like expect more of that on your sophomore album? I definitely think so. I, I want to go kind of for more of a fun, like upbeat vibe but still like incorporate the dark elements that my previous music has Britney Spears is definitely was definitely an inspiration and then also the prodigy um I don't know if you listen to the prodigy but we covered one of their songs called breathe um at my show in London and I just love the way it sounded within the set within my other songs and that bridge in the new song, Super Sex Mona Lisa, it's, it's very much heavily influenced by that song, Breathe. So listen to it and you'll you'll sort of see the similarities. You went on tour towards the end of 2022 and you made an appearance at Bush Hall in the UK early this year. What is it like touring in this post-pandemic world? It's really, really nice and refreshing, obviously, because we went for so long without being able to do anything. Because it had been so long, I sort of had a different perspective on on the shows. And I, I guess maybe I cared more about it, that I was able to sort of dissect almost every show and take notes um, on just sort of how the songs reacted within the set, like which ones were people's favorites. and. I met so many people after the shows, like I went and met all the fans, really trying to see like what kind of people show up to my show and, and who's listening to the music. And um, I definitely took that information and used it for, you know, going into the second album um, okay. and how I can become a better artist. Your debut album, Un American Beauty, and it's almost a year old. It's it's, you know, 10 months old at this point. After sitting with it for a couple months, what are you most proud of with this album? That this album was sort of the first piece of art that um, took me a really long time to make. Like it took a year and I don't think I've ever spent a year doing anything for that long. It allowed me to grow like as a writer and just overall as an artist, um, especially, um, with my visual art, um, the music videos I got to direct and like produce. Um, we did a lot of the editing ourselves. I also feel like the album is still being discovered by people, which is really interesting, like because I wrote it almost two years ago and I kind of feel like 
my life has changed since then. But like, there are people who are still reaching out, being like, "Oh, I just bought the album," like, or "I just discovered this song." It still has a lot of life left in it. And I'm also wondering, like, is there a track that you go to the most, like, on the album? There's a few. There's a few songs that. I feel like I kind of reference or I try and just remember the way that it was made. Afterlife is definitely one of my all-time favorites. Like the lyrics in that song, and I feel like it sort of represents me well as an artist. Ride or Die is a song that I always reference when it comes to writing like a catchy chorus. Home video that's on Un American Beauty. That also has like a really simple structure to the song. It's a very classic sort of like verse pre chorus with like a little bit of a post chorus. And I just love those kind of classic pop style songs. I noticed that your aesthetic um, for your um, Un American Beauty album and just your style on Instagram is very um, dark academia meets modern Gothic. And do you change your aesthetic based off of, you know, your album eras? Or is there like a Xylo style guide? Um, that's a really good question. I think that I always try and stick to kind of the same things that I like. Like I really like classic timeless pieces that won't really go out of style, like a collared shirt or like a skirt or a blazer or whatever. Um, but I feel like I always try and like tweak it a little bit for each era or at least like evolve it a bit because I don't want to like dress exactly the same always. I don't want to keep it fresh. My mom was a stylist for like 20 years. So she sort of dressed me in certain things. She really likes me in like preppy stuff. So I think that's why it's kind of evolved into that. Like collared shirts, mini skirts, cardigans. That's just what I kind of gravitate towards. Yeah, and speaking of, you know, growing up and um, musical inspiration, what inspires you today to continue to do music? I've always wanted to be creative ever since I was little. And I just feel really lucky that I'm able to sort of do that and sustain myself. I mean, my fans inspire me so much. And also, like, my grandfather was a huge inspiration. He worked so hard as a musician um, and kind of started at nothing and built his way to have this like legacy and that's a really big inspiration for me so what can we expect sonically as an inspiration on your new sophomore unannounced album i mean i'm not entirely sure right now <laughs> because i'm still working on it but i'll definitely say that it's more colorful the song structure of your recent single super sex mona lisa is almost similar to I Love You in an English accent, which you've released earlier this year. I love you, 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 I love you. It does have like this big, almost instrumental break towards the end of the track. Do you think those songs are subconsciously linked together or tell a similar story? I think so, for sure. I mean, I see a lot of similarities in the production because when I wrote I Love You in an English accent, I think I was already ready to start a new sort of chapter and I was already um, sort of closing the book on Un American Beauty, like not in a bad way, but I just sort of wanted a little bit of a different production style where I wanted to blend sort of electronic, more dancey electronic music with guitars um, and I see that similarity in those two songs for sure. Being an artist takes a lot of work and you do tours which take up a lot of time. So what is your typical like day off from being an artist? Like honestly I love just being 
a fully lazy piece of shit. Like, excuse my <laughs> language. That's kind of like my favorite thing to do. I mean, besides going and hanging out with my friends, like I have so many amazing friends and I love, love, love spending time with my friends. Um, I'd say literally laying on the couch and watching like any show, binge watching a show and just ordering an insane amount of rubbish like uber eats <laughs> when i'm exhausted that's kind of all i want to do you know do you have a favorite show that you go back to and binge give us a glimpse into the xylo life well succession is my favorite show like of all time but obviously that's not even over yet so um but i'm sure once it is i'll be re-watching mm-hmm. the seasons because it's so good but I mean, Friends is is my favorite show of all time. I literally have watched every season probably a hundred times. I'm also a really big Love Island fan, so <laughs> I'll probably yes. be watching that soon when there's a new season. Um, your friends have you know a specific spot in your music, and if so, are there any songs that really are shaped you know by your friends and for your friends? Aliens was about my friends um because it was like after the pandemic during the pandemic sort of thing um where everyone was kind of feeling like what's going on with my life like i don't know how to adjust and sort of get back into this new reality and we're all feeling a bit sort of lost um and confused we all sort of go through the same things and experience the same things we're all human and that kind of like brings us together um and something that we can relate to to each other hung in the bag is about someone that i was friends with that like had a really bad drug problem (laughs) i can't really think off the top of my head that's kind of a hard question i'm wondering who is like your dream collaborator to work with to have on a track sometimes i say drake because i feel like i love him so much and i feel like our music is so different and i also kind of feel like he has this, some of his like sultry, like housey songs, I feel like would be really cool with like a soft vocal on it. And I don't want to go for the obvious, like, oh, Lana, you know, I don't know. Seems too obvious, which <laughs> I would obviously love to do, but I would probably also not want to do it because I'd be way too afraid. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Where do you envision yourself five years, 10 years down the road with, you know, music? Like, where do you want to be? My my biggest goal really is to just be able to tour. Like I really, really like playing shows. I like seeing people in the flesh. Um, so yeah, I mean, my biggest goal is to be playing like bigger rooms and just kind of building up my touring. I see myself releasing like way more music as well. Um, hopefully more collaborations. And um, I'm working on a lot of other things on the side as well. So I don't know building up pretty records and and yeah just growing and before we close out this interview do you want to say anything to your fans i just want to say i love you that's pretty much it (laughs) short sweet simple yeah xyla 